Hey, thanks for joining Rudy and me. We're looking at the what's called minor prophet with a major message. Boy, that, that is the truth. Isn't that true? All of the minor prophets have a major message. We we looked yesterday at the surrounding areas around uh, Jerusalem and Judah, and how God said, "This is what's going to happen to you." But now He turns His attention, like is so frequent in the minor prophets, He turns His attention to His own people, and here's what He has to say: "Woe, soiled." defiled oppressing city it has listened to no voice it has accepted no correction it has not trusted in the Lord it has not drawn near to its gods its officials within it are roaring lions its judges are evening wolves that leave nothing until morning its prophets are reckless faithless persons its priests have profaned what is sacred they have done violence to the law. The Lord within it is righteous. He does no wrong. Every morning he renders his judgment, each dawn without fail, but the unjust knows no shame. All right, Rudy, before I get stand on the table and start preaching, you get a chance. <laughs> she listens to no voice. She accepts no correction. Uh, it's just pride. You know, I, I know we, we keep talking about this, but ultimately pride is the deadliest thing, I think, in humanity. And that's what the evil one does. He amplifies our pride. Uh, and I know that we don't need the evil one to amplify it because during the millennium reign, the world still comes up against Jerusalem with, with the evil one being chained for a thousand years. So that's another kind of uh, look into the problem of the flesh. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. So, so I, I listened to uh, Henry Blackaby uh, as he gave a lecture at the Cove. That's Billy Graham's retreat center. This is several years ago. And uh, Blackaby's theme was, why hasn't revival taken place in America? And uh, he said, don't look at politicians. Don't look at business. You have to look at the church. So I'm going to take his advice, and I'm going to apply this to the church. Are we soiled, verse 1? or verse three, excuse me, are we defiled? Do we oppress other people from the church standpoint? Uh, look at the scandals that have frequented people who claim to be followers of Jesus. The big name scandals, there are a lot of lesser known scandals that are there too that are hidden away because there's not, they're not present. Have we accepted God's correction? That's verse two. Have we taken his correction? Are we trusting the Lord? Blackaby has this great saying in here. It says people have, get a program which comes neatly in a book or in a set of tapes or uh, you know now on the internet, YouTube, and they say it doesn't work. And I love what he says. It never works. Only God works. <laughs> I remember when I was preaching in Mississippi, I would listen to a Pentecostal preacher out of Beaumont, Texas. I loved his voice, and he sometimes was so good. And he talked about somebody riding a bicycle down the aisle of a church saying, now, if, if you bring so many people to Bible school, we're going to give you one of these bicycles. And he just got really loud with his voice, and he says, Jesus, the power of the gospel is what saves, not giving away bicycles. I still, I can still hear his voice in my mind. It's a 50 year old story. Uh, they've not trusted the Lord. They've not drawn near to God. The, the amount of prayer that pastors claim that they have is infinitesimal, not much. I'm so grateful to belong to Maywood Baptist and our pastor and leaders really put a strong emphasis on prayer. Good for you.
Amen. So we look at this, we have to say, Lord, to the church, how can we, I look at myself, how can I respond? I can look at government, I can look at all sorts of areas and point a long bony finger, but the real issue, why does revival tear in America? Because the church needs to repent and we haven't. Make a comment there, Rudy. I've well, waxed eloquently. <laughs> I can remember praying for revival uh-huh. a lot. And I, I mean, I used to pray for it all the time. You right. Know, just that we would, it would be like, you know, around 1900 when the uh, Pentecostal revival yeah. that uh, swept the world. And God always brings a revival before something bad happens. Yeah. But then something bad happens. And I, re- I remember praying this, to praying this. It's like, I'm not, no revival, Father, because I know what's coming after it. Yeah. Uh, yet, we still have to pray for that because that is the protection in the storm that is coming, that is yeah. to come. Yeah, let me make a comment that this is my opinion, okay? You and I met in the prayer movement. And in the prayer movement, we did a lot of praying for revival. Some of the people, not all the people, some of the people in the prayer movement have quit praying and they've become politically active. Uh, some of the big name people have gotten very politically active. This is my opinion. God, forgive me for judging and forgive me if I'm wrong. Instead of waiting on God to fix the situation, they have chosen to get politically active. Waiting on God is plan A. Getting politically active is plan B. And they've gone to plan B, which I think is to the detriment of the cause of Christ Uh, in America and possibly around the world. God is saying to his people, I'm going to bring judgment. And uh, your officials are roaring lions, judgments are wolves, prophets are reckless, priests are profane, sacred, but the Lord is righteous. We need to be righteous like the Lord. And, you know, I I have ever need to turn this message to myself and say, Bob, take it to heart. May that be so. Rudy, why don't you have a comment and close us in prayer, if you would, please. (laughs) Uh, Just verse 4. Her prophets are fickle, treacherous men. Her priests profane what is holy. They do violence to the law. And so, what is violence to the law? Basically, violence to the law is saying something that is not the highest good is the highest good. And the only universal truth, the only highest good that ever will be is in this book. And it's not a figment of our imagination or something that we decided that the only way to get it done was to compromise it. So that's why we have to get our daily bread. Yeah. Uh, So, and that's the reason that we, as we're getting our daily bread and realize that uh, it's what nourishes us then we find that we need this to make it through the day and Mm -hmm. we're asking what God would have us to do today or Mm -hmm. what change in our life he wants us to do that's really the repair of the earth you got it pray for us father help us to Mm -hmm. uh, to come to understand that you're the only one worthy to reign. That it, and help us not to take it for granted that you're going to have grace on us. Yes. Hallowed be your name, Father. Mm -hmm. Above every name in this earth, Father, or ever will be. Mm -hmm. Father, lead us away from evil and to your loving heart. That's right. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Rudy, thank you. Thank you all for listening. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.